Hi, Jason Pilgrim here from the Profitable Practice Podcast, where we help allied health professionals just like you empower and inspire the lives of so many more people by building bigger and better businesses. Let's go and get stuck in right now. Okay, so look, let's get stuck straight in. We, we've uh, spoken about on previous episodes about some of the complexities. People want to do blogs sure. and they want to do audios mm-hmm. and videos and tagging and meta tags and all this other stuff that I don't even know a huge deal about. Mm-hmm. But they don't ever actually um, start with the really simple things. And it was a critical point that you brought up previously where you actually said they've really got to be able to start at the very beginning and know exactly where they're going and what they're doing. Yeah. I always think about Steve Covey, one, yeah. of, the, one of the seven habits of highly effective people. Always begin with the end in mind. And I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm assuming that's where you're going with this. But can you explain a little bit more? Where do, where do we need to start? What, are the, what is the first thing that these people need to actually stop and think about with their website before they get into the details of blogs and meta tags and all of that? Yeah, so with regards to the begin with the end in mind, that that really comes back to a holistic view of your business. And that's really important. So you need to be very clear on why you do what you do and what you want your business to look like. That's separate to your website. But once we've got that in place, then you need to wind everything back. You know, let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's wind everything back. And it comes back to one thing. And that one thing is who is your ideal customer? Absolutely. Now, people kind of freak out a little bit at this point when I talk to them because I'll say, who is your ideal customer? And they'll say, oh, look, anyone. It's like, no, 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 no. If you, one person, who's your ideal customer? Or anyone with back pain. It's like, no, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And look, just to jump in, we do a lot of work with our guys in and around this. And the way I always, I always even have this joke that they'll say, oh, um, females between the age of 20 and 40 that have got a child. And I sit there and I go, man, you know how many women are between 20 and 40? I mean, us guys, we have hard enough trouble pleasing one woman, let alone every woman <laughs> yeah. in that in that demographic. Yeah, no and it kidding. becomes a demographic, not a target. Yep. And there's even a mess, they can then move into that whole uh, uh, women that are mid to late 20s, early 30s with their first child. Yep. And even then I sit there and I say, but hang on, why don't you take someone who's two different people? Person A, she's a, an executive manager, she's 34, she's in the corporate world, she sits at a desk job, she might be overweight with back pain, first child, might have had a few years of difficulty to fall pregnant, etc. is completely different to how we need to pitch, how we need to talk, communicate, empathize, link with that person, as opposed to person B who's 26, Mm -hmm. she's got a fine figure model living on the northern beaches, blonde hair, spends $1,500 on a a special pram because it's all about drinking lattes, going out with your friends and it's all about appearances. Mm -hmm. And how you talk to that target is gonna be completely different to someone who's the same as what you think from the overview. So we talk a lot about that as well in regards to that target, but I completely agree. It's so much of it has to be about getting, like, you know, what's what's the saying? An inch wide and eight miles deep? Yeah, and do do you find as well when when you chat to people, as soon as you start to, like you can see people start to tense up as soon as you say you've got to narrow down because they're like, what if the 60 year old guy from down the road, like now I'm targeting my message at this, you know, woman from the Northern Beaches, he won't want to use me anymore. And that's just not true. Absolutely. Yeah, complete, completely. I think where I like to start with a lot of this from the business side of things is not necessarily who is in this, like your target market, but mm. it, to, to break down that resistance and to enable people to get the juices flowing and understand like that cringe factor of, oh, I don't know what to say here. Mm. I actually go to the opposite and go, who is it that you don't want to talk to? Yeah. Who is it you don't want to pitch to? And in our industry, a lot of people come up with stuff like, oh, well, I, I hate the tire kickers that are the people that just want the, 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 the few free sessions under Medicare funding and, you know, they've had a problem for 20 years and it's only because they're getting it for free as such that they want to come along and they're the ones that are tire tire kickers, they waste my time, they're not accountable, they won't deliver, etc. what I ask them to do, so therefore they want to whinge at me and etc, etc. So I quite often start with, let's actually take out the the BS of who Mm. you don't want to deal with first and that Mm. allows them to then start to go, well, they're not the ones that I want. Well, great, if they're not the ones that I want, who is your target and where are we taking this? Okay, so it's really important at this point as well to say, you know, it's like, it's all good and well to say we, we want to find out who's our ideal customer. 
But then I just wanna package this up. And the reason we wanna find our ideal customer is because if you know who that ideal customer is, if you know their name, their age, where they live, what they do, how much they earn, you know, you described someone very specifically just before. If we can pick that one person, what that does is that allows us with our website to create everything on the site directed just at that person. And it's not, this just isn't website related, this is marketing related. Absolutely. And I'll give you an example of a big business who does this very, very well. And I'm sure you're aware of it. Have you seen the ads for Coles, down, down, prices are down? It's who? Coles, yeah, never exactly. heard of them. Yeah, down, so, down, prices are we so can sing it. I, I, I did I'm this playing one. air guitar right now for, for, right? for the viewers so at home. Understand. Okay. <laughs> so who is the person shopping in those Coles down, down, prices are down ads? Ah, it's the it's probably the 70 or 80 percent of the population, isn't it? That are the mums and dads that are you know conscious about how much they're spending on food with their kids. And but specifically on the down down prices are down ad, think it's of the, the person in the family that's doing the budgetary side of allocating funds off their salary for food and kids sport and so pitching. You, you watch you watch closely. And every one of the shoppers, quote unquote, in that ad are always a very specific gender, age, they always have the same type of items in the trolley. They all have the same clothing. Let's clothing. Let's yep. say, as my mum would put it, athletic build, or in this case, non-athletic athletic, build. Yeah. Yes. And because Coles know who their target audience is, they know that it's the, they've got and if I ask you about who is that person, you would tell me they've got young kids. It's like, how do you know that? There's no young kids in a Coles ad. It's because they're always carrying huggies in their trolley or they've got uh, bulk buy purchases in their trolley. You know they shop once a week, they shop in bulk, they're looking to save money. Coles doesn't advertise for a 17 year old boy. But you know what? Does that mean a 17 year old boy will never buy at Coles? Oh, absolutely. He's always there, isn't he? They go in and buy their Coke and their Mars bar and they buy their chips on the Friday night before they go out to their mate's place for parties. So why isn't Coles down, down, prices are down, advertised, targeting directly at a 17-year-old kid buying Because it's Coke not the Mars right bar. medium to connect to their target audience. Exactly right. And nor are they going to be the highest spending target audience. Because you want to find who is your highest spending target audience and the customers that you love having. You know, let's think of the old 80-20 rule. Yep. If you took a look, Good old a look at your principle. Business, Yep, I love this. If you took a look at your business and said, okay, here's my, let's not start at the top 20%, let's start at the bottom 20%. Who are the 20% of time wasters in my business? Who are the 20% of people that I just really don't want? Any business right now, and I'm not suggesting that you do this, do this under guidance, but you can put a line through those customers and when they try and come back, you can say to them, look, I've loved servicing you, but you just don't fit, uh, you know, let's just say they're not spending enough money. You might say, you need to buy a multi-session pass. If you don't buy a multi-session pass, look, unfortunately I can't service you anymore. I actually know another physio, for example, who can service you down the road. Speak to them, they're more than willing to take you on board, but right now, uh, unless you're willing to get that multi-session pass, it's not something that we can work with. Now, some people will jump above that lower 20% line and say, I don't want to be cut away here. Oh, people get scared, don't they? They'll get scared. Yeah. But some people will go, okay, thanks. And you'll find that you'll get thanks from customers that you can cut away with that you don't want to actually Absolutely. be working with in the first place. Now, I'm not going to go into this now, but there are a few little tips and trick techniques. So if anyone hasn't heard them and they are listening to this, get in contact with me, but it does involve, awesome. you know, if because if, you, if you're a physio and you physically have a, your wrist in plaster, mm. you can't treat. No. It's so hard. isn't it great when you just happen for a week to have your hand in plaster, your wrist in plaster? <laughs> all right? And, and I can tell That's you, good. all of these I've done before. Wow. I always say one of the best things I ever did was uh, did my ACL in my knee. Yeah. Twice. Because then you've got a brace on and you can't stand up and you can't treat and you're on crutches theoretically. So therefore you have no choice But and there's all strategies in place as to then as to what we say and how we then move them away from my client list onto the client list of my team members. And the way we use the words to actually make sure they realize that they're the specialties in this area and you know etc and that they're probably going to be better for you and I've got to swallow my pride exactly. and make them realize that 
I, I don't want to feel like I'm not doing everything I can for you and this person's a better person suited or you physically have a brace on or a plaster and you can't treat for four weeks and you know you go on holidays work on the business for four weeks and all of a sudden you drop you know 50 or 80 percent of your diary onto your other team member and you've freed up all your time then to either see more of your target clients or work on the business or whatever it happens to be so there's a lot of stuff that we do there with that as well but oh it, man it's I love so, this. it's so relevant isn't it it's I just, love this and this is people laugh but I say one of the best things I honestly think probably one of the two or three biggest and best things ever to happen to me was when I did accidentally the first time around well I did accidentally the second time too but, <laughs> but, but I did actually do my ACL because it yeah. actually made me stop for yeah. six weeks and back away yeah and actually re readdress and it gave me all these ideas and strategies moving forward so yeah, yeah. But anyway, I digress. It's um, it's funny because this is not the direction that I think either of us thought this chat would go. No, but no. It, it's it's equally as relevant to find who your target audience is, but also who your anti-target audience absolute, is. Absolutely, absolutely. Because you know the mistake that we make in business is, like we said at the start of this chat, uh, look, I I want to be working for any female age twenty to forty, but you know we don't know where they fall into that gap, and then all of a sudden we're actually marketing to people who aren't interested in our products or services or we're marketing to people who we don't actually want as our clients. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't it be so much easier if you could say, I want to market to this person of this age in this location, this demographic, this is what they do for a living, these are their problems. All of a sudden on your website, you're not trying to be everything to any everyone. You just get yourself into the mind of your ideal client and you say, if I was in their shoes, what is it that I wake up in the morning or that keeps me, one keeps me awake at night or two that I wake up in the morning and go, I need to solve this problem? Absolutely. And what do you have to offer? Because you've got something to offer. Well, you have to be the solution, don't you? That's right. They don't wake up in the morning, for example, and say, get up out of bed, look out the window and go, you know what, I'm going to go and buy exercise physiology today. <laughs> and they're not sitting at the breakfast table going, oh, I'm going to go and see my dietitian today. Yeah. You know, I wonder what the food label's saying. So people just don't do it. Let's be no. completely honest. And we need to, like you said, we need to be able to communicate our our, our words and our tonality and make sure that we, we, we match what we're saying that's congruent to the solution that they're actually wanting. Correct. And that's a really critical one. It can't be just about this is what I'm going to say and put out there because it looks nice or it feel nice Correct. or I would do that. It needs to be based purely on what the person that's making the buying power is the way that they are going to communicate, relate to you and be able to make a purchasing decision based on that. Mm -hmm. and I know that we're talking a lot about money and purchasing, but let's be honest, we, we are in the business of health. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, you don't start yeah. a health business to live out of the gutter and not be able to change lives. You need to be able to have a profitable business that can change lives and you can reinvest into different programs and help the needy and charities, etc. But you need to be able to do that wearing clean clothes and being professional and not having a three day growth and etc. So it is all about the business of health when we think about it. If I take all your money away, you can help far less people than Absolutely. if I gave you, you, you know, someone said to me a while ago, and we might finish on this because I know we're kind of yeah, absolutely. talking a lot, but uh, someone said to me many years ago, they said, money doesn't change who you are. Money multiplies who you are. Absolutely. So if yep. your goal is to help as many people with their health as possible, if I put more money in your hands, you're going to help more people. Absolutely. If you're a bit of a dick and I give you lots of money, you're going to be a really big, big dick. dick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. So you just need to figure out where you're at. But if, you know, that's the name of the game. And I think even you said it to me in a conversation a while ago. You, you use that phrase. You, at one point, you've got to pay to play. Absolutely. You've got yep. to put some skin in the game. Yep. And that's the same for your clients as well. You know, your clients know if they're, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, right? Your clients, you cannot force someone and say, if you come in and you have my service, I will change your world from a physio physiology point of view. You know this about people you see in the streets. You know that you can do that. But at the end of the day, you can't drag them in, force them to have the treatment and change their world. They have to want to change the world, Absolutely. change their own world themselves. And it's a really big talking point that we talk about a lot in regards to like bulk billing with Medicare clients. Mm. And everyone, the vast majority of people listening to this will be sitting there going, oh, and they're the tire kickers and things like that that we spoke about. But here's the thing. For the rebate that they get back, I literally turn around and say, even if you're in a low socioeconomic environment, 
add rather like at the moment the rebate's fifty-two dollars and ninety-five cents. I literally say make it sixty bucks, and you watch what's the, what the difference is. If they physically have seven dollars and five cents mm. of skin in the game from their wallet of their yep. hard-earned cash that yep. they have to put forward, yes, one in ten might turn around and say, "Oh, if uh, I'm gonna, I need it to be bulk build or whatever for whatever reason." Fine, ditch those 10% of yep. clients. Yep. You ditch those 10%, you're gonna actually see less clients, 10% less clients, but you're actually going to make more money and improve the lives. But here's the thing, Pete, I know from our own data, 64 to 65% of outcomes are improved by people paying as little as $7.05. Yep. So if I can then turn around, and I use this as marketing as well, to turn around to, to GPs and things like that, and I can actually independently prove with data that the accountability that they have by spending $7, it's like an overexpensive cup of coffee, large with mocha, latte, frappa, syrup stuff. Welcome to Cronulla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, they spend $7 on that yep. service, yep. and you can actually guarantee a 65% better improvement in outcomes Mate, Incredible, that, right? Mate, oh, that's gold. That yeah. is absolute marketing gold right there. What do you want to that. achieve as a professional? Yeah. yeah. Better, 65% better outcomes, seeing less people, making more money. Tell me how those three things are not exactly what we're aiming for in business. Exactly right. Well, let's catch up mate, next time. We'll absolutely. More this about is brilliant. It. We'll dive into it. Mate, really appreciate your time. It's been awesome as always. And you're welcome. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Profitable Practice Podcast. I would love nothing more than for you to be able to leave a review. I get so much joy out of listening and reading the amazing things that you guys say about this. So please subscribe to our channel, leave a review and share it with your friends. Let's get some more fantastic information out there so all of us can grow the industry together. Cheers for now.